Hi students, welcome back. I hope you found the previous videos useful. We are now back with another topic, linear combinations and span. Let us first define what is linear combination. We'll start with the vector space capital V and take a subset S of this vector space. If we take small v to be some vector of our vector space and take v1, v2, vn, etc. to be vectors from the subset S, let's take some real coefficients a1, a2, an, etc. and write a combination a1, v1 plus a2, v2 plus dash 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 plus an, vn. Now this is nothing but a linear combination and here we have written the vector from a vector space small v as a combination. Let's take some example. If we take v to be the vector space r square, that is the plane, and take some subset of r2 as 1, 0 and 0, 1. These are the two vectors from S. If we want to write some vector minus 2, 5 from r2, we can write it as minus 2 times 1, 0 plus 5 times 0, 1. If we add the right hand side, we'll get the vector minus 2, 5. This is nothing but a linear combination of the two vectors 1, 0 and 0, 1. Few things to note. If a subset has a single element, let's say that the subset S has a single element vector V, then its linear combination will be just a scalar multiple A into the vector. Second thing. For writing a linear combination, either or, all or some vectors of S can be used. If we want to write a vector 2, 0 from R square, we can only use 1, 0 from S. 2, 0 is 2 times 1, 0. Or if we want, we can use both the vectors 1, 0 and 2, 0 as 2 times 1, 0 plus 0 times 0, 1. So we have used 0 to use both the vectors. Then the third thing which we should remember is S, the subset, can be an infinite subset. But the linear combinations which we make from the vectors of S will always be finite. Let's define what span is. So, if S is a subset of a vector space V and we write all possible linear combinations of vectors from S, this makes the span of S. We write it as span, in brackets we write capital S. So, in layman's language, span S is nothing but the set of all linear combinations. Again, few things to remember. Span of S is the smallest subspace of a vector space V. Span of S can be equal to the vector space itself. For example, if we take V to be our R square and we take the same subset S with vectors 1, 0 and 0, when, which we also write as S is equal to IJ, where IJ are nothing but the unit vectors, then span of S will be the entire plane R2. In case of V is equal to R3, our unit vectors I, J, K, if they are in the subset, then span of S is nothing but R3. And in general, if V is R to the power N, that is we take the Euclidean n-dimensional space, then the subset S of the unit vectors E1, E2, En, they will span the whole space Rn. So we write span of S is equal to Rn. Let's see some examples. We are given in this example a vector space R3 and we take a subset from this vector space, let's say S is 1, 3, 2 and 0, 1, 4. There are two vectors in our subset. Then the span of S is nothing but the linear combination of 
these two vectors. So if we write the linear combination as a times the first vector plus b times the second vector and add, we take a and b inside, we'll get the vector a comma 3a plus b 2a plus 4b. So what is span s? Span s is nothing but all vectors of this type. To find whether a given subset S of vector space V spans a subset S or not, what we do is we will take some vector V from a vector space and write it as a linear combination of vectors of capital S. And then we try to solve the system. If it is solvable, we say the subset spans the vector space V. In the second example, we take the vector space R3 and let's say the subset is 0, 1, 2, 1, 0, 3 and 1, 1, minus 1. That is, there are three vectors in our subset. If we want to find if S spans R3 or not, we'll start by taking some vector x, y, z from R3. So here our small v is nothing but x, y, z from R3. And we'll write x, y, z as a linear combination of the vectors given in S. Now, x, y, z will be a times 0, 1, 2 plus b times 0, 1, 3, uh, sorry, 1, 0, 3 plus c times 1, 1, minus 1. That is, if we equate the left and right hand side, we'll get x is equal to v plus c, y is equal to a plus c and z is 2a plus 3b minus c. If we write it as equations, we'll get 0 into a plus 1 into b plus 1 into c is equal to x. 1 into a plus 0 into b plus 1 into c is equal to y and 2 into a plus 3 into b minus 1 into c is equal to z. Now let's put it in the form ax is equal to b. And we solve using the Gauss elimination method. The first thing we do is we form the augmented matrix. We'll do the elementary row transformations. Here, what we did, we interchanged the first and the second row to get the pivot in first position. And we'll see that finally we get a matrix which is solvable. Here in the last matrix we see we have 101, 0, 1, 1 and 0, 0, minus 6 in the matrix A. And our coefficient column is y, x, z minus 2, y minus 3x, which shows that the system is solvable. Which means the subset S spans R3. Let's add a new dimension to this. What if we want to check whether a particular vector 1 minus 3, 4 belongs to the span S? Then we do the same thing, but instead of x, y, z, we take the vector 1 minus 3, 4 and we will do the same routine. So when we simplify, we get instead of x, y, z, 1 minus 3 and 4 in our rightmost column. And we will then write it as a system and solve. On using Gauss elimination, we will get the values of the coefficients a, b, c and here we get c value as minus 7 by 6, b as 13 by 6 and a as minus 11 by 6. Let's check if we substitute the values of a, b, c in our previous equation 1. Let's go back. In equation 1, if we put the values of a, b, c, we will see it will solve to the value vector 1 minus 3, 4. So we can find constants a, b, c such that 1 minus 3, 4 can be written as a linear combination of vectors of the subset S. Let's take another example. Now this time, let's take the vector space to be P3. That is the vector space of polyn all polynomials of degree less than or equal to 3. And we take the subset S of these three polynomials. 
x cube plus 1, x square minus x plus 1 and x. And now let's see if s spans p3 or not. So what we'll do, we write the coefficients of all powers of x3, x square, x and the constant term in columns. And rightmost column, we take x, y, z, w as our variables. So when we solve, we can see that the final matrix is not solvable as in the last most row in the matrix A we have all zeros whereas the right hand side has a variable. The system is not solvable hence we say that S does not span P3. In other words it is not possible to write any polynomial of P3 as a linear combination of polynomials from S. Let's take one example on matrices. To find if the subset S of these four matrices of M22 spans M22 or not, we'll again write the matrix here. Now how do we form the matrix? We will start with one matrix at a time. Take the row, form a column from that. So 2 minus 1 come in the column, then pick the next row 1, 0 and just add below that. So in our matrix, we have 2 minus 1, 1, 0 from the first matrix. The second column 2 minus 2, 5, 0 is from the second matrix. And in this way, we form our matrix, the augmented matrix and we will do the Gauss elimination. After doing the Gauss elimination, we find that this system is solvable and hence we say that the subset S spans M22. Thank you for watching.